what do you worship? Well, I, I don't really worship anything, but I, I do devote myself to the advancement of humanity uh, using technology. Do you pray? I don't. I didn't even pray when I when I almost died of malaria. Wow, that's really not praying. Right. So you put your money where your bug spray was. Yeah. Do you have a spiritual life? Uh, well, it sort of depends on what spiritual means. Um, but what do you think spiritual means? I mean, there's certainly uh, things that we, we don't understand about the universe. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm less convinced that there's, say, um, some, some super consciousness watching over our every movement and kind of evaluating it against some criteria, you know, and deciding whether we're going to go to one place or another when we die. Mm -hmm. I think that's unlikely. Right. I, I think that's very unlikely, too. Exactly. I mean, and, and, and it does beg the question, if there is some super consciousness, or consciousness where did the super consciousness come from? Um, and uh, so I think the most likely explanation is uh, that uh, complexity evolved from simplicity. You know, that the simple elements over time combined to become more complex and mm -hmm. arrived at what we are. Mm -hmm. um, what blows your mind? What gives you awe? Well, I think that the nature of the universe uh, gives me awe and, the, and just the, the huge expanse of the, of the universe. How far away things are and how big they are the fact that there are things like supermassive black holes that are equal to a billion suns. You know. What about dark matter? Doesn't that freak you out too? Uh, yeah, and dark, dark matter um, is also, I mean, uh, dark matter and dark energy are, are, are kind of interesting because I mean, I'm not sure what those actually are. You know, obviously people don't know what, what no, those actually right. are and it's particularly dark energy. In fact, this is why, you know, th that may be an argument for this being a simulation. Um, because in a simulation, you wouldn't, you know, you could just make things be however you want. It, it, the laws don't all have to be consistent. I had this like existential crisis when I was a kid, and uh, and tried to figure out what's it all about. And, kind of, and none of the books I read seemed to actually have a good answer. You know, so I said I read all the religious texts and I read a bunch of philosophy books, and they were all quite depressing. Um, actually, when I read uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, I thought, okay, this is a pretty good one. Um, you know, just to sort of try to uh, gain greater enlightenment over time, that seems like a good goal. Because we don't really know what the meaning of, the, of, the, of life is, um, but, or even really what the right questions are to ask, but if we can uh, improve our understanding of the universe, then eventually we can figure out what the right question to ask is, uh, you know, if it's not meaning of life, it's something, you know. Yeah. The question is harder than the answer, and if you can properly phrase the question, then the answer is the easy part. Um, and so, uh, the, if, to the degree that we can um, better uh, understand the universe, then we know, better know what questions to ask, and um, then whatever the question is that most approx approximates what's the meaning of life, <laughs> you know, that, that, that's, that's the question we could ultimately get closer to understanding. Um, and so I thought, well, to the degree that we can expand the scope and scale of consciousness and and knowledge, um, human knowledge, then that would be a good thing. And so, so I think that there's certain things that are necessary to ensure that the future is good and uh, to be a space-bearing civilization and for humanity to be out there among the stars and be a multi-planetary uh, species. Um, all of our consciousness, all civilization, everything we've ever known and done is on this tiny blue dot. People also get, they get too trapped in there, it's like squabbles amongst humans. And there's not think of the big picture. And they take uh, civilization and our continued existence for granted. They shouldn't do that. Look at the history of civilizations. They rise and they fall. And now, civilization is all, it's globalized. And so, it, civilization, I think, now rises and falls together. There's no, there's not geographic isolation. This is a big risk. Things don't always go up. That should be, that's an important lesson of history. So it's funny, the, the universe appears to be 13.8 billion years old. Earth, like four and a half billion years old. You know, another half billion years or so, the sun will expand and probably evaporate the oceans and make life impossible on Earth, which means that if it had taken consciousness 10% longer to evolve, it would never have evolved at all, just 10% longer. And I wonder, I wonder how many dead one planet civilizations there are out there in the cosmos that never made it to the other planet and ultimately extinguished themselves or were destroyed by external factors.
follow a few. Look again at that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you've ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. The aggregate of our joy and suffering, thousands of confident religions, ideologies, and economic doctrines. Every hunter and forager, every hero and coward, every creator and destroyer of civilization. Every king and peasant, every young couple in love, every mother and father, hopeful child, inventor, and explorer. Every teacher of morals, every corrupt politician, every superstar, every supreme leader, every saint and sinner in the history of our species lived there, on a mote of dust suspended in a sunbeam. Our planet is a lonely speck in the great enveloping cosmic dark. In our obscurity, in all this vastness, there is no hint that help will come from elsewhere to save us from ourselves. The Earth is the only world known so far to harbor life. There is nowhere else at least in the near future, to which our species could migrate. If you consider the, the, the major elements on the scale of evolution um, as being the advent of single-celled life, multicellular life, uh, uh, differentiation of plants and animals, life going from the oceans to land, um, mammals and consciousness, those are probably the big ones. But I think on that, uh, on that scale would also fit life becoming multi-planetary for the first time. Um, you know, I think it's perhaps at least as important as life going from the oceans to land. Um, and it would, uh, I think, preserve the light of consciousness. Uh, you know, the, the consciousness, the probability of consciousness existing for a long time uh, would, would be much greater if, if we were on two planets. If something catastrophic were to happen to Earth, then right. it would, you know, life would still exist on another planet. Right. I mean, let's say there was a, a, a giant uh, meteor impact or, oh, or okay. a super volcano or, you know, we, we had sort of massive nuclear war on Earth or right. some super virus, right. um, you know, I mean, there could be something that, that doesn't necessarily initially uh, destroy um, human civilization, but, but knocks it back to a much lower technology, technology level, uh, right. and, 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 that, and then there's sort of a decline to, to eventual extinction. I mean, I think the, being a multi planet species and being out there among the stars is important for the long-term survival of humanity, and uh, that's one reason, kind of like life insurance for life collectively, life as we know it. Um, but then. The part that I find personally most motivating is that it creates a sense of adventure and it makes people excited about the future. Now, if you consider two futures, one where uh, we are forever confined to Earth until eventually something terrible happens, or another future where we are out there on many planets, maybe even going beyond the solar system, um, I think that second version is incredibly exciting and inspiring and there need to be reasons to get up in the morning. You know, life can't just be about solving problems. Otherwise, what's the point? There's got to be things that people find inspiring uh, and make life worth living.